You hear this? Listen. The sound of birds, breeze, and very little else. This is historic Idlewild, and this is Lake Idlewild in the early morning sun. This was one of the only safe bastions for blacks to come, play, and stay from the 1920s, really, to the 1960s. Now, of course, it was known for its splashy nightlife, but today, present day, in the light of day, it is visible that Idlewild is a place in transition. The moment day breaks, the sounds of progress drown out the songs of birds. Neighbors say this house has been purchased and is being refurbished by a judge from Detroit. And then there's Doug Brown. Now able to work remotely, sold his home in Florida to live in Idlewild permanently. He's the fourth generation to own property here. His children are the fifth generation. So for me, there's a place in my heart that I don't know how to describe. Um, there's a feeling that I get when I come to Idlewild that I don't get anywhere else. As locals from Yates Township come to enjoy the only public beach in the well, area. This is the worst. We're probably right in there. Past this corner here. Locals, who for generations have been stewards of Idlewild proper, this longitude and latitude once called Black Eden, plan its what's next. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. That's but without a strategic plan or specific funded tourism efforts from the state, those tied to the community by heart and history are piecemealing a comeback, refurbishing historic landmarks like the Flamingo Club, once known for big music acts like Sarah Vaughn and Jackie Wilson and beautiful showgirls. We're doing our part to put our best foot forward to show that we're putting our blood and sweat into it. Then it's Hopefully we can get it backed up with grants to go in and fix the inside. But there's a new act in the wings, less focus on the flashy past and instead capitalizing on the secret sauce basics of black families, building and strengthening community. You come here and you're like, I'm okay. And I'm gonna be okay because I'm surrounded amongst family. And when I say I'm surrounded amongst family, it's not blood family, it's friends, it's people that you know, just accept you as a community. Idlewild existed because of racism and exclusion in the early 20th century. Middle-class blacks to wealthy business people and physicians, innovators, entertainers, athletes purchased here because Jim Crow laws gave them no place else to go. Now that blacks can go and buy elsewhere, generations of Idlewilders are working to give blacks a reason to come back and invest. Every Wednesday in the summers, the Idlewild version of Ladies Who Lunch, Pizza, Wine, Bridge, and 365 combined years of commitment to Idlewild. <coughs> Denise Bellamy is the president of the Idlewild Lot Owners Association. Idlewild is known for music, and I was part of the Idlewild Music Fest, and of course music I love music, but community is what's going to keep us all together. Music can come later, it can come anytime, but families, families and, and, and people who have been here for generations, they, they've held it down all these years. And so moving forward, I think community is what is, is going to have more lasting power. Six generations of my family have been uh, in the house that I now own, so that's how long we've been coming up, mm -hmm. a long, long time. Well, I think it goes back beyond the entertainment, uh, and we have to start with why Idlewild was important when it started, because there was a lot of unrest in the country. People didn't feel safe. People were being lynched and harassed. Many of us are looking back to 1913 and 1914 up to the 20s, and we are seeing the same kinds of things happening now that used to happen then. We see people being accosted and harassed. We see people wanting to feel safe, uh, people wanting to really celebrate what we have achieved uh, as a race since we have been here. And uh, people are now coming back. People bringing families up here, um, then the, their families can introduce their families, and that's how you keep things moving. One of the Detroit's newest lions, Devin Funches, has turned the historic Red Rooster into Peyton's Bar and Grill. The community up there and the, and the families that's up there is, 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 
it's history based and just being a part of that and seeing them collectively come together, have a great time at the bar, um, just watching the cameras and seeing everybody just have a ball, it's just it's a blessing itself. Weeknight evenings are for relaxing, swimming, paddle boarding, drinking in the sunset and the calm before the weekends. Weekends are a draw for families and fun seekers with an endless lineup of events, music shows and reunions. We the people of Detroit come um, and do their um, Great Lakes People of Color uh, retreat here for the second year in a row. Summer Oasis Music Festival, Glamping Festival is coming back, so that's always a big draw and people look for it. They like to hang out and party on the grounds, but they like to come and stay and have a bed and shower, you know, sometimes. Idlewild, no matter how it comes back, will look and feel different. And even in this cocoon stage, as Idlewild is perched to emerge on the other side of history, a focal point of the growing consciousness of surrounding communities, those communities that once excluded the residents of Idlewild and forced it to become the Black Eden it once was, are now part of the inclusion of what it will become. In Idlewild, Paula Tutman, Local 4.